Hello and welcome. In this tutorial, I am going to show you how you can avoid unnecessary VBA code when building user form in Excel. The code I will share with you will save you time. It is just a one-liner code and it is easy to maintain. You can use it in any VBA user form project. Feel free to download it using the link in the video description. Consider this user form. All the fields marked by asterisks are required and hence, the user cannot leave them blank when filling the form. When an attempt is made at adding a new record with the required fields not entered, you get a critical message and you are prevented from adding such a record. This is how many people will approach coding such a data validation. This approach, though works, it involves a lot of typing. Maybe it is okay when you have just one or two controls to check if they have values. It is difficult to scale when a lot of controls ought to be verified. If I want to add a new control or remove an existing control, I must manually edit the code. If you have a new project with different controls that are required to be filled, you need to code something like this to validate the required controls on that user form as well. That is a lot of work. Another bad thing about this approach is that at runtime, it does not tell you the control that you forgot to provide a value. You need to manually scan through to find which control needs to be filled. How about replacing all that with this one line code, which is reusable? easy to maintain and it does not require you to modify the back-end code. It looks clean and it can tell you the first instance where you did not enter a value. You get all the positive things that the earlier approach did not offer. I am going to show you how to set this up and use the pre-written procedures you can download using the link in the video description. This is how it works. If you are using the downloaded starter workbook, you should have a module called Merge Utils. Inside it are two procedures. The required field exists procedure basically takes a user form and loops through all the controls on the form looking for those with a certain tag. The default tag is required and if it finds one, it checks if data was entered for that control. If there is no data, it returns true. In that case, we know that the control has no value and hence, we may call the required field message procedure to print a message on the screen to notify us. Or you may want to entirely choose to do something else. The two procedures can be used independent of each other and in different scenarios where there is a need to check if fields have values. What you need to know is how to set the tag property of a control. So, go to the user form called required fields which you should see if you downloaded a package. We need to find a way to identify all the controls that we want to check or mark as required. Click on a control for instance, contractor name. In the property tag, you can give it a string that you want to use as a common identifier for all the controls you want to validate. I used the string required. A tag is just whatever you want it to be. We give controls similar tags so that we can give them a common functionality. You can use any tag string you want, but just be consistent. You can check the other controls and you will see that I have defined the tag for you. All the required fields have the required tag. Once again, use any tag you want, just be consistent. In our case, we want to validate the required fields when the add to tracker command button is clicked. We can use our procedures as follows. If require field exists, we give it the argument me. Me here refers to this user form. And there is an optional argument tag us, which we will not specify because we used the default to tag our controls. Remember to use the tag string you gave to the controls during the designing phase of the form. 
or if you changed what I defined for you, use it as the second argument. If any required field is not filled out, we raise the required field message and then exit the subroutine. Perhaps you do not want to raise a message but do something else. Just specify that here. The required field exists procedure returns a boolean and you can decide on what to do with that. Let us try this out. We click the command button and we get a critical message that fields marked by asterisks are required. When we click OK, it takes us to the first instance where this occurred. Let us fill out some few more and then click the add to tracker again. We are still missing some required fields. Click OK to see the next instance of where we need to fill out. When all the required fields have values, we can check again and this time we do not get the critical message. We got this functionality with just a line of code. These are the benefits of using the procedures I have pre-written for you. You can use it in this project or any other project. In the same application, you can check required field multiple times and make decision on what to do each time. In our case, we have two separate functions. One checks for presence of empty required fields and the other just prints messages. Also, we get to know where to fill out right away. So we need not to manually scan through the form to find out where we need to fill out. Our user form itself has less code and hence easy to maintain. This separation of user form code and functionality is a good practice you may adopt. Our one-liner code is easy to scale to more controls we need to validate as required. You do not need to change the back-end code of the user form. Just give the control the tag value. You do not know what you will break when you begin editing or updating the back-end code itself. And this makes our approach relatively safer since we do not get to edit the back-end code. Feel free to use the one-liner approach in your own user form project. Thanks so much for watching and please subscribe, like, comment and share for others to benefit.